Hello, good afternoon, everyone. Happy Thursday. Welcome along to uh, this week's deep dive. Uh, we are going to spend this session taking a, a closer look at the image and video requirements for the different social media channels and how the sendable dashboard handles these requirements. Um, so for those that haven't met me before or been to one of our webinars, let me just take a moment to introduce myself. My name is Marcus. I'm based in uh, London, England, and I'm a customer success specialist at Sendable. Um, I will be joined uh, throughout this session by my colleague, Julie, who works in our support team, and she'll be on hand to answer any questions that you might have uh, in regards to this topic. So once again, if you do have any questions, feel free to submit those questions throughout the session. Um, there is a questions tab. If you're sort of looking at the screen, it's just to the right hand side. Uh, next to the chat tab, which I can see people have already started to say hello. Uh, so I'll just quickly say hi here as well. So you know exactly what I'm talking about. Awesome. So you can see Peter, Jennifer, Matthew, everyone's in there. So hello, everyone, and welcome. Thanks for joining. OK, um, now, for those that have been here, you know fully well, we like to play little icebreakers before we get started. So today's icebreaker is, um, is an Olympic icebreaker. As the games are on, I'd like to know if you could participate in the Olympic Games, which sport would you be doing? So whether you can do the sport or not, what sport would you like to do if you could do any? Ah, skateboarding. Peter, I was thinking skateboarding as well. Uh, a few fans of diving. Julie is long distance swimming. Oh, I can't even do 100 meters, Julie. So <laughs> excellent job there. OK, so I once said watermelon eating. Now, I don't think that is an Olympic sport. But because you're participating, I'm going to let it slide. So <laughs> that's actually brilliant. All right, keep those coming. <clears throat> These are some really, really good ones. Oh, the butterfly swim, that is hard work. Um, basketball, brilliant as well. <laughs> excellent, excellent uh, suggestions, guys. That's really, really good. All right, I'm going to start to share my screen. If I could get some indications in the chat when you can see my dashboard, that would be great. I'm hoping it should be around now. Yep. Yeah. Oh, thank you, Peter. Excellent. Okay, so today's session, as I mentioned before, we're going to really focus on the image and video guidelines that um, the social networks expect us to follow when um, creating our posts. So we do highlight these in and around our dashboard and our support portal. Um, so you can easily find that information out. So the first place I want to uh, bring your attention to is just down in the bottom left hand side is this little question mark, uh, which is our resource center. And for those that was uh, joined us last week, we actually run a deep dive specifically in sort of the resource center and our support portal. So what I want to do here is click our resource center. And this is where you can access our support and help articles in the second option here. And so what I want to bring to your attention is that we've created articles specifically for image guidelines and video guidelines. So if I uh, type um, image guidelines here, uh, we should be able to see uh, the best, actually, let me just type guidelines in here. Okay, so you've got best practice, social media image guidelines. So when I select this article, it actually brings the article uh, within this window where we can sort of scroll down and get the different image articles for each network. Now, it might be a bit small and hard to consume in this window here. So we, whenever you see this icon, it will open the article in a brand new tab. Now, we don't need to do that because I actually have the articles open up here. Uh, so you can see this is the article that we're just scrolling you through. And when you open things in a new tab, it does take you over to the support portal. So you can see sendable uh, support.sendable.com. And this is the article in, in full. Now, I'm not going to sort of go through the whole article, but just to kind of let you know how we uh, display the data, we try and make it very easy to digest. Um, so we've captured the guidelines under each specific network. So you can see for Twitter, we're letting you know what the file size should be, um, letting you know that GIF images are supported, 
and what sort of pixel limit uh, can be as well. And so we kind of go over those steps uh, for each network, so Facebook, Instagram. Obviously, YouTube doesn't support videos. It's a purely video network. So we kind of tell you off the bat that YouTube uh, images are, are not allowed. Okay, so you can use this article, uh, this help doc here, and sort of anchor down to each specific uh, network that you're that you're actually interested in. So these resources are a really good place to kind of pre-prepare the content that you are wanting to post. So you've got everything in the right file size, uh, the right dimensions, etc. Okay, and we also have a very similar article that covers our video guidelines. So a bit more information on Twitter. As you can imagine, videos come in sort of different formats, different lengths, different file sizes. So we really want to kind of make sure you know what we can and can't support. And once again, that's sort of broken up into sort of specific networks. Okay. So if there's any sort of specific questions that you got around sort of these articles or the... Um, uh, the guidelines here, please feel free to add those into the questions tab and we'll make sure we get this all covered towards the end of the session. Okay, so that's our support portal and you can access those via the resource center as well. So I hope that is uh, very clear. Now, let's actually go into our compose box and see what happens when we're creating posts using images that may not fit those requirements that we just saw. So maybe the image is too small, maybe the image is too big. So I'm gonna click Compose here. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go through, I'm just gonna select different social networks here. So you can kind of see what warnings come up and where. So I'll go in and sort of add my Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, LinkedIn, and we'll add YouTube here as well. Okay, so you can see now I've got a tab for each of my networks here. And so what happens when I try and upload an image that maybe doesn't meet those expectations? I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to upload an image, and I'm going to upload it directly from my, um, my machine here. And I've got some examples. I've got an image which is too large and an image which is too small. So we're definitely going to be able to see the difference here. So let me upload the big image here. OK. Now. We can see straight away that on the Instagram tab and the LinkedIn tab, we've got a, a couple of warnings. So Instagram has given us a red warning, which means that this is likely to bounce. Like I say likely, this will bounce. Red is sort of a no-go. Whereas the sort of yellow warning is more of a advisory that, hey, it will be delivered, but it could be optimized better. So as we can see, Facebook is absolutely fine. It's not putting up any warnings. Instagram, uh, let it load and it will actually display what the warning is. So it's saying that the image ratio is incorrect and the image that I've selected actually exceeds the allowed ratio. So it wants us to either choose an image with a lower aspect ratio or we can edit the image. So there's two ways of editing the image. You can do it directly from the uh, warning message up here or I can actually go and click on this pencil icon down here and this is going to now open up the image editor. Now, remember, we was in the Instagram tab when we click that edit button. So if you notice over on the right hand side here, it's given us very specific um, formats and dimensions for Instagram. So the Instagram square, Instagram portrait and the Instagram landscape. So it's allowing us to really create uh, a specific size, which we know would work very well for Instagram. Okay, so now we can sort of reposition where we want to our, our crop here. And then we can go ahead and sort of save this image. Okay, so that's now saved the image and it's made a, an edit for, for Instagram. So it's now sort of unique to Instagram here. And the warning has gone. Okay, so Twitter seems to be no problem. That's absolutely fine. If I head over to LinkedIn, you see it's given us a, a yellow warning. And now you say for best results, we recommend using a sort of a landscape orientation. So once again, it's, it's prompting us to edit the image and sort of follow the, uh, the recommendations here. So once again, when I open this image, 
we have our LinkedIn um, portrait here, and then we can just reposition and optimize directly for LinkedIn. So now it's removed all of our um, warnings. I can go ahead, add the text, and go and publish. But let's say if I'm in the, uh, the global tab here, and fair enough, I don't have any warnings, but what happens when I try and click edit in the global tab? You guessed it. It's given us options for absolutely all of the different channels. Um, because it's in the global tab, it doesn't, it's not sort of forcing us into one sort of shape and size. It's given us the flexibility to um, literally use any uh, variation of those templates that we want. Okay. So I'll go ahead and close this and I will kind of run through a very similar example, but when the image is kind of too small, what's gonna happen? So when the image is big, we can reduce the size without jeopardizing the, uh, the quality of the image because we're reducing it, we're kind of keeping the quality. But if the image was too small and we try and stretch that image, I guess you can imagine the image will turn out to be pixelated uh, the aspect ratio might look a bit off. So let's go and see uh, what happens. So we'll go and select uh, a handful of different um, social channels. And then we'll go and upload an image that this time is going to be too small. So I have my sendable logo here. Uh, if I scroll down, you can see it's tiny. It's only 60 by 32, whereas the large one was sort of a 1668 by 732. So it was really big. Okay, so once again, uh, it seems that like Facebook and Twitter seem to accept quite a lot. It's really sort of Instagram and LinkedIn that are throwing up these, uh, these warnings here. Um, so you can see now it's saying that the image that I've attached doesn't meet the minimum um, width and height. So it doesn't actually give me the option to edit this time because it's not going to allow me to, you know, edit an image and enlarge an image because it's going to uh, affect the quality. So this hasn't actually given me the option. It's, it's just saying, hey, you're going to have to change this image. LinkedIn, once again, it's given us a yellow option. Uh, so it will allow us to go and edit this image. Now, once again, it's not looking great, um, but because it didn't really have that minimum requirement, it's not sort of blocked us in the same way that Instagram has. Okay, I'll go and add an image. Just go back and get the uh, the big one in there. And then we can kind of look at some of the other Im um, options available via the image editor. So I'm gonna click edit now. And we were very aware that, okay, we can change the size quite easily. Uh, we can actually change the resolution here. So if I go into free transform, I get back the uh, original size. So I can lock the resolution here. So then if I want to maybe make it, let's say 800, it will change the height as well. So you're keeping that, uh, the resolution locked, but you could sort of change it by unselecting uh, that as well. But at the top here, we have some other options as well. So we've got the options to actually add filters to some of the images that you've uploaded. So you can sort of go through and see different types of um, of filters that we have here. So a few under the duo tone, uh, you have a few under black and white, and you can kind of really style that image now. That's a kind of cool, but <laughs> I quite like, you know, something like this. So you've got a selection of different filters that you can play with. You've got the opportunity to add uh, some text overlay. So it's now becoming a bit more of an editing tool so if I wanted to add some text, you, know, you can sort of drag and drop where you want that to be, sort of change the color of the text, uh, add the copy, et cetera, even add a bit of background if you like. So you can really start to, uh, to really customize the images. And last but not least within your image editor, you've got the options to add stickers. Uh, so whether it's uh, emojis, um, and I feel there's uh, some shapes that you can go in and add. So you've got those options as well. And we do allow you to upload um, stickers and things from your own uh, library. So you can select upload. Uh, this logo is a bit of a bad uh, quality, but you can see I can upload my logo, reposition it uh, in the corner 
and, and so on. So lots of options that you can do within the image editor. It's not just sort of cropping the image to fit the profile um, that you're trying to publish to. All right, that is great. I do want to touch on our video editing options as well. So um, I'm not going to upload a video. I actually have a video saved in my content library, in my video library. So I have a few videos here. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to add one into my Compose box by clicking Share. And now I have my video um, added to the Compose box. So this is OK in terms of its format, its size, the sort of work on a few channels. It's sort of longer than 60 seconds. So I expect if I pick Instagram, I should uh, get a bit of a warning. If I think if I uploaded the video here, it, I would get a warning. But what I really want to bring your attention to is just this edit button here, because this is where we can sort of add uh, different settings for the video. So if I click edit here, I have a few options that are supported by a handful of different networks. So I'll just quickly run through these and then I'll, I'll bring Julie in to answer your questions. So the first option we have is the video title. So, you know, the, the title that's going to be displayed on the social media channel alongside your video. This is supported only on YouTube, LinkedIn and Facebook. So Instagram wouldn't show a video title uh, in this example. You've got the video details, which is only supported by YouTube, where you can go and add your tags for sort of SEO purposes. And then you can add your category. So this is sort of mapped into what you would see in the, uh, in the YouTube backend. And last but not least is a very exciting new feature that we released earlier uh, this year, where we can now go and select what specific thumbnail of the video you want to use as your preview image. This is supported on both Facebook and Instagram. So you can actually sort of scroll through uh, the video and actually select uh, what frame you want to be used as the thumbnail. And then when you save that here, that will then be changed here. Ah, oh, thumbnail feature is awesome. Thank you, Liz. Thank you. No, we're really happy to have it here and hopefully we can start to build on it as well and you will see sort of different phases. Okay, so I think I've actually gone five minutes. <laughs> yeah, it's a big Easter bunny. Uh, I've gone five minutes over. Uh, I have heard a few questions go over, so I'm going to stop sharing my screen. If there is any more questions, please feel free to still submit them. And I'm going to invite Julie here to review your questions and provide you some answers. So Julie, if you can hear me, feel free to join us. I'm here and we did have a great question as we kicked off. Um, I believe Kathy asked about if I were to create just one image, um, what size would it work for Twitter, Facebook and Instagram? And the bad news is there isn't one. Um, each and every platform kind of sets its own um, guidelines and they don't really talk to each other. So I'm going to share my screen just briefly um, because we did, oops, share screen. Um, we did just publish a LinkedIn post that had um, some of these guidelines um, and the social media image sizes. So Instagram, Facebook, LinkedIn, and Twitter and even for those, that, you notice that really none of them go all the way across. Stories does. That's the one that's consistent. However, you're not able to publish to Instagram stories or pretty much any of these stories directly um, through Sendable. You would have to intervene uh, using this, the uh, Instagram reminder app. Um, but the landscape one, even though that does go all the way across, you'll notice that the image sizes are different. So there, there really isn't one that's going to work for all of the platforms and look equally good on all of them. I'm sorry to say. <laughs> there was another question too. Ah, set your image settings parameters on an iPhone to expedite the process of formatting for both Instagram 
the idea being you shoot quickly on an iPhone and it's ready to be loaded into Sendable. And I think um, Marcus did a good job of, of showing you how you can just take a native um, Instagram image and import it into Sendable and then edit it within Sendable um, so that it was it's going to suit whatever platform that you are going to be sending it out to the best. So uh, actually iPhone images, mobile phone images of any sort work usually quite well um, for social media. That's what they're designed for. I mean, social media wants you to publish things on the go with your phone. Um, so they usually tend to work pretty well with, with photos taken on a mobile phone, but sometimes you, you want to go in and crop them like Marcus demonstrated. Awesome. Okay, I think someone requested a link to an article. Oh, okay, sorry. I think I was going through those articles pretty rapidly, but thank you for providing that in the chat, in the questions. And then Ryan had a question. I noticed when I add a video, sometimes the video disappears from the individual tabs, such as Instagram. Okay, Ryan, yeah. So Julie says, uh, you know, that shouldn't happen. Uh, so please, if you could capture... Um, maybe do a screen recording or just a few screenshots for us, send that over to support at sendable.com. Uh, we'll definitely investigate that for you. Yeah, you may have to, some of them may not like uh, the video, um, but it shouldn't disappear. And I think there was one that literally just came in at the top there from Kathy. Uh, I upload images with appropriate names in the hope of searching and finding them really easy in the media library. Often, however, they don't come up on search and I have a lot of images with just called attachment. Am I doing something wrong? Uh, Kathy, I'm just gonna quickly show, share my screen again because what I really like to do, as, as you can see, I've actually stored my videos in, um, in a content library called video library. What I would recommend you do is actually create um, a new library for images and store your images uh, there, and you can actually then tag. So um, when you're storing content, you can actually add a tag to describe your content here at the bottom. And then when you are, so let's tag this as sort of uh, a bunny, okay? Uh, wait, let me do that again. Uh, bunny, enter. So the bunny tag is now here. Uh, and I'll also tag it as Thursday, because I can see bunny is in the, uh, the title, so I don't want to cheat. So if I do uh, a Thursday tag instead, if I can spell today, there we go. And I'm gonna update this content. So that's been now saved in my video library, but Kathy, you could do the same in any sort of image content library. And when I compose, I'm gonna sort of ask for that content to come into my compose box via this book icon here. This is where I can reference any content that I've had saved. And switch into my content tab, and I'm gonna search by either bunny, it should give me the videos and also Thursday, which should give me just the one video. So that would probably be the best way uh, to use that. Uh, I know, I think you were saying that you was going into your media library and trying to search via here. And as you said, they're all kind of called attachment, isn't it? Which isn't as helpful. You can actually filter by who uploaded that image, which might save some time. Um, but I think uh, try and use the content library where you can actually save the images, give the images a specific name and a tag, which is going to be very useful. It is also possible to rename the images in the content, in the media library, excuse me. Um, and so if you do have a few that you use repeatedly, um, you might want to just go back in there and rename them. Awesome. Absolutely awesome. Okay. Uh, Kathy, do let us know if that has helped. Ah, thank you. Excellent, excellent. And that's a great tip, Julie. That's, uh, that was new for me, that is. That's perfect. Awesome. All right. How are we doing? I think we've kind of gone uh, over all of our questions and the chat. So I hope everyone has found that useful. Um, I thought it was a really good session. As you know, we do hold our webinars every Thursday at the same time. If there's a specific topic you would like to see us cover um, that we haven't already, 
please uh, email your suggestions over to success at sendable.com. And hopefully we can run a session that suits your needs. All right, Judy, thank you so much. Uh, I, uh, I can see a few people typing. I think they're just saying thank you. Excellent, excellent. Okay, guys, this was awesome indeed. Um, have a fantastic rest of your week, a lovely weekend. Enjoy the Olympics, the skateboarding, the watermelon eating, all of the above. <laughs> and we'll see you again soon. <laughs> all right. Thanks, everyone. Bye now. Okay.